Hey guys, anyone that came in, I'm in here making a little bit of food. But I'm here. I'm here, so don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. I'm here. Oh. Hey, Linda. Hi, Mama Wanda. Hi, Azra Moose. Sorry, I was in the kitchen over here just to grab myself a little bit of food to eat while we're chatting and playing. Oh, it is late, um, but I came home and I took a nap after work. So I'm having some broccoli, or not broccoli, huh? cauliflower. Just figure it's a healthy snack this late at night, but it is 11.30 my time, so this won't be too long of a chit-chat. But I've been wanting to show you guys this faux stained glass that I played with uh, several months ago, and I hadn't had a chance to do a video on it. And I would have been on about probably a half an hour ago, but I couldn't find my watercolors. Because I don't have an organized craft area, so I'm, all my craft stuff is spread around the house in different rooms and in boxes. So, What's everyone else up to? I saw that Melissa was on. I was in there for a brief moment earlier tonight. Anyone crafting or just kind of hanging out and relaxing? I'll get started here in a minute. I can't imagine cauliflower would make you much hungrier than anything because it's not very filling but it's healthy and you know me I gotta get that back surgery okay so for this project I got to playing around several months ago and these are the five dollar watercolors at um, Michael's and this is their pearlesque watercolor palette and so here are two pieces I did. So this is a faux stained glass piece. I did it all on poster or on a cardstock. And that's with the different pearlesque watercolor colors. This one is just the watercolor. I'm going to turn autofocus on just for a second, guys. So this is just the watercolor with no glossy accents on it. This is what I'm calling faux stained glass. If you can see, it looks like glass because what I did was I used glossy accents on top to make it appear like glass. So you can see when I catch it just right that it has that nice gloss finish on top. And so it looks kind of like a, a, a stained glass window. So I'm going to show you the process that I did to go through here. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Rita. Rita, you might have to refresh. Someone let her know to refresh. Anyway, so we're going to recreate something similar to this for you guys tonight. So again, this is the $5 paints, the Michaels. So I'm just going to wet them down. I have the paintbrush. I have a pencil. I, have a, I don't have a ruler 
can't find my ruler, but I do have this little piece of ruler that I'm going to use to measure some of the measurements. And then cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and start by cutting this cardstock down, if I have room here, to like a 4x6 poster card size. Maybe I'll send out a postcard with this to someone, to one lucky person. I'm not going to say winner. I don't want to do a drawing necessarily. <laughs> I don't know where my ruler is, so that's all I have left of one. I don't know, Rita. That's weird. All right, so I cut a piece of four inch by six inch. This is 110 pound cardstock. I don't think it needs to be any special paper or cardstock. You can do this probably on typing paper, but it just won't be as sturdy. Of course, probably watercolor paper might even just be the best. All right, so as you can see, I'll leave my example out here. All I did was kind of take a pencil and I drew lines as guidelines. And I think these, let's see, this was a uh, half an inch around. So I'm just going to kind of measure half an inch in. Good. I'm glad you fixed it, Rita. So I'm going to go a half an inch in on each side. And so what I'm doing is I'm just basically, and since I don't have a ruler, we'll assume this paper is straight. And these lines are just kind of my guidelines. Get a half an inch that way. Half an inch there. A <clears throat> Anything else been going on other than craft room cleaning? I'm done with my Valenpoodles. I just need to mail them out. I'm done with my journal. It actually went out and already got to my person. I'm short on painting paper, so I'm going to break out uh, a video in the next couple nights and do um, several different marbling techniques to make more painting papers. So be on the lookout for hopefully a live on on doing uh, marbling. I'm going to do uh, Melissa's method with the marbles. I actually bought marbles. I'm going to put them in a box and roll them around. I have the Dollar Tree kit, which is the $1 marbling kit. And then I'm going to do um, shaving cream with the new, uh, with my glimmer mist that I bought and my new inks that I bought on clearance at Hobby Lobby. All right, so that's kind of the idea. So what I do is I drew out all the lines to make this. So I'm going to skip. Okay, so Rita, yeah, this is faux stained glass. So they're using watercolors, glossy accents, and then this is the next thing. This is that, I got it at Hobby Lobby. It's that liquid letting. So it's simulated liquid letting. So if you look at this, this actually is like a stained glass window. This is a raised line, just like on stained glass. So this is like the leading on stained glass, and it's just a liquid. Okay, so go through, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw this whole thing out, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Draw out whatever design you want, and then the next step is to take your liquid leading. 
Of course, there's a hole in it. And the stuff comes out pretty consistent. So just take it and start and squeeze and start running it along your drawn line. Let me get it. There we go. All right, so there I go. I got it started over there on the paper. So you just trace your lines basically with this liquid leading. Just I try to stay consistent just because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to stuff like this. But I just try to stay consistent. Now there's a little blob that I just messed up on, just a little drip. You can wipe that off, or you can leave it because, in my opinion, liquid leading back in the days of making stained glass was not probably perfect either. But you just kind of trace these lines. Like I said, I try to do a nice consistent size bead of leading. So yeah, so if you've worked on this, this is similar to doing it on glass. But I found it makes neat little ATCs. And you can see here that I got a little quick at the end. Oh, uh, uh, there we go. So all I have to do is just carefully just add a little more to it and just drag, connecting those lines and filling in. And again, if you look at stained glass, there's not, there's definitely not um, any stained glass letting that's perfect. Yeah, if you have a, uh, if your hands are weak, it's not too bad once you get the stuff flowing. But I tell you, once you sit down and do this whole thing in one session, you kind of do kind of get tired. But, again, it's, it's kind of the fun of it. So then you kind of go around. Ah, come on, Sean. And don't let the liquid go back down because it's not fun getting it back to the tip. There we go. So follow the line. Now I'm doing this pretty quick, so it's not too neat and orderly, in my opinion. All right, so the magic of internet. Oh, look, I'm done, <laughs> and it's dried and ready to paint. <laughs> so, yeah, so do all your lines. So this is a different design that I'd pre-done. So here's all your lines. Let it dry. Doesn't take too long. I think I let mine dry for an afternoon. Azure Muse, I bet you could. Hi, little C. I don't see why you couldn't make your own, but to be honest with you, let me tell you right now, this liquid simulated liquid letting for a two ounce bottle, which you know I haven't used any hardly any of it, is only three dollars at Hobby Lobby. So I mean, even if it's the only thing you go for with your forty percent off coupon, you'll get it for a dollar eighty, which is maybe even what I did. So, I mean, this is a cheap investment for something I'm not going to use a whole, whole bunch. But, of course, we're all crafters, so let's, you know, experiment, play with other things. But, like I said, $2.99 is not bad. So, little C, I'm teaching a fun little project I did called faux stained glass and so this is one I did I'm using the pearlescent Michael's five dollar palette of watercolors use the liquid letting and then after the paint dried I did a glossy accents to make it look like glass 
Um, here's an ATC I did. No glossy accents, but just kind of played around. This was my experiment piece. I'm playing around with how to do the leading and how to paint and see how it looked. So after I liked that, I went into this. So fast forward, after you do the lines, let this dry. And now I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to eat my cauliflower before it gets too cold. Anyone have anything cool going on? I know here we are getting down to 17 degrees again Thursday night. I'm tired of this cold weather. You can't thumbs up on your device, Rita? So for me, I just kind of go in here. I try not to put it on with this pearlesque stuff. I try not to put it on really thick because I want that effect of kind of a see-through. So I kind of put it in these spaces, splotchy. Now I really like these pearlesque paints from... Uh, Michael's not bad for a cheap set but then I come in and I just get a little bit of water and because I want it thin I just kind of spread it out make sure it fills the whole pane of glass so to speak and the good thing about watercolors is if you want to oh, nice brush that came with it But if you want to, with watercolor, you can actually lift paint up, take it back out. So I can make it even thinner and more see-through. Anyway, you see my color palette over here. If you guys want to vote on colors, feel free. I'm doing this pale pink right here right now on these rectangles in the middle. Yeah, see, I'm not a, you know, I live in Missouri, you know, so I get all four seasons, but I prefer spring and fall. I like a little bit of rain. I don't like all this snow and cold. I like to be able to wear a jacket if I want to, but not a heavy coat or go out in shorts just to run to the car without throwing on layers. Yeah, how are you doing, little C? Are you feeling better? Yeah, Rita, I mean, this set, again, is the Michael's Everyday Value, and it's only $5. I mean, to me, that's not a bad price at all. And the pans aren't very deep. Like, there's not a lot of paint in these pans. But I tell you what, I, and I don't, I don't do a lot with them just because they are cheaper watercolors. Like, I wouldn't paint some really nicer paintings with them. But just this filling in these squares or slopping down some watercolor on ATCs, um, or mixed media mashups or something like that. Definitely worth the five bucks. And they really do put off a good shine. So, you know, my transmission went out of my car. Well, the, my, my company had an old company pickup and they did decide to go ahead and sell it to me. So I do have a car for the meanwhile. Just got to get the title to me and get the tags done. Hi, Jen. What's going on? 
So I'm doing a faux stained glass. I probably should leave this. Probably should leave this in the in the frame, but that's kind of what we're what we're working on. I'll put a list in the uh, description below after this is all over for the supplies. And Carrie, it's great that you can poop. People have to have a good poop. That's all I can tell you. Oh, speaking of poop, <clears throat> I'm gonna do a video. But this is the poop that Susan Geither Cordes taught me. But this is where you take all your die cut, which she calls die cut poop, which is all the little scraps. You layer them on paper and use gesso to glue them down and they do dimensional layers. And then you paint over it and then you gesso over the top. So I'm going to do some of those. Yeah, and Rita, I don't have good watercolor paints yet. Um, at a thrift shop, I think I have them on the table here. Maybe not. As I drop everything on the floor. I need to clean up my craft area because I have the last four nights worth of play up on here. Anyway, at the at the thrift store, I got a partial box of watercolor tubes, um, and I've been playing with them. They're actually the real colors, like uh, oh, what is it, ochre and. <laughs> Yeah, I heard when you have... Hi, Kelly. Yeah, I heard when you uh, have your gallbladder out, you got to be careful of... Uh, you got to be careful of greasy food. All right, let's go with purple. We'll do purple here. Funny thing is, in my life, I've lived in Missouri, Oklahoma, Texas, then back to Missouri, then to Kansas, then Missouri. I have not lived a lot of places. I've traveled, visited. I have not lived in a lot of places. Oh, Rita, that would be cool. Yeah, I knock on wood, I still have my gallbladder. My wife uh, had hers out several years ago. And funny thing is, that's the least of her worries with her fibromyalgia. <laughs> Post gallbladder removal, that's nothing. It's mild compared to the stuff that she goes through with fibro. Now, I don't know how to do stained glass, but am I supposed to paint this one purple too and stay purple in those? eight triangles or am I supposed to alternate like I am? Maybe if I'm going to teach you guys something I should teach you like how to actually do stained glass theory too. <laughs>
Yeah, so when I got home from work, I forgot to say, the reason why I'm on so late is I got home from work and I had was not able to sleep very well last night because of my back. I went to bed late for one and my back was killing me, so I was tossing and turning all night. So when I came home from work, I ended up taking what was supposed to be an hour nap and I ended up taking about a two hour nap. So I'm not 100% tired, which is just going to play, you know, snowball into tomorrow. Unless I don't stay on here very long and I actually get in bed and try to sleep. All right. I am going to do a different color. I think that would look cool if I didn't have all purple there. So let's do green, teal, oh, that teal's cool. Oh yeah. Thanks Wanda. So I don't know if you guys saw, I did this, I did this bracelet that's the sweet pea pattern, which is cool. It's kind of like little individual balls uh, of chain. Well, I've made, and I don't have the hooks for them yet, but I made earrings to go with them. And I'm going to try to list all those, uh, all my new jewelry I'm making on my Etsy so I can uh, make a little bit extra money. Uh, with the pickup going down and then me having to prepare for my surgery in a couple months, I'm trying to sell and make as much money as I can as opposed to taking donations like I was when I was in a rush to try to figure out how to pay for uh, my time off for the surgery. Which, by the way, like I said, I appreciate everyone that did donate because I've put it aside to help when I do surgery. So we're, we're a little bit ahead. Um, dipped into it a little bit for um, the pickup just so that I can get some transportation quick um, and I'm going to replenish it and then put more aside so there's that I love that those colors are awesome Funny thing is, this reminds me a lot of doing like an adult coloring book because I'm coloring in the lines of a pattern that was made. Now that's one thing I can do instead of it being a traditional like looking stained glass pattern, I may look at doing like a uh, Zentangle and trying it out with a Zentangle and then coloring in the Zentangle. That might be fun. and use the liquid letting that way. And what I like about the liquid letting is it's just like just like you would think it's like having walls up. So I put the uh, watercolor paint in here and it kind of fills up the, the space so it's like um, doesn't intrude on the next color over unless you get wild with your brush. Hi Danina! Yeah, and the funny thing is, I don't live very far from work, and I was actually talking to uh, one of my co-workers today, and I, I actually might, on purpose, go try to get my my bike uh, tires fixed, because they've kind of uh, dry-rotted over the years, because I, I stopped riding it. And I don't live too far from work, and on days I don't need an automobile to go to like job site meetings or get anywhere else. I may start riding my bike to work. That's weird to think that I want I want to exercise because I don't like exercise. But so, Janina, I'm showing tonight how to do this faux stained glass. So I'm just using cardstock. I'm been I traced out a. Uh, stained glass pattern 
use this three dollar liquid leading which is in the stained glass area of Hobby Lobby we'll do watercolor paint and then top it off with some glossy accents to make it look like it has like a shiny surface like a window yeah Wanda it will save money Danina I'm calm oh that's just because I like I'm just sitting here chit chatting and, and crafting I mean I'd be crafting anyway so why not show you guys something that I played with and learned how to do um what kind of bike do I have little C the bike is like a mountain bike just a uh, it's more it, it's used for on and off road it's kind of a crossover bike uh, doesn't have a lot of gears it's not like a 10 speed I think it has three gears um Rita uh, I grew up in Kansas City my whole life pretty much up until college um, I've been to st. Louis a few times and actually at the end of uh, February I'm going to st. Louis so mm. yeah I'm eating yummy yummy cauliflower <laughs> With barely a sprinkle of cheese. I did cheat a little bit, put a little bit of cheese, but I had none left practically. Yeah. Actually, Azure. My um my seat's one of those <coughs> excuse me, extended riding seats with the gel pad in it. And it's not the skit. It's not the skinny racing seat. It's kind of the big butt seat. So, <laughs> oh no, Carrie, not about not a motorcycle. I don't own one yet. And to be honest with you, motorcycle would be good. I hear they're very economical too to be driving. All right, next color. Um. I have no idea on color theory. Let's do this orangey salmon looking color. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice, Danina. You kind of uh, you kind of sounded nervous, I have to admit. Uh, but you did great. I mean, no big deal. I'm used to being in front of people, you know, over my life. I've, I mean, see, and I do my spray paint art in front of people too. Like I do it live at events, like at craft fairs and different events. So I'm used to talking about what I do whenever I'm painting, you know, like this is the steps I'm doing. Try to interact with them. It's kind of, it's more entertainment than it is painting. Um, that's why when I try to go to events, I, I want it to be an outdoor event so I can actually paint live and not just display my art. Because when people see you do the spray paint art, they're, I'd say, probably easily three to four times as likely to actually buy a piece than it is to just look at it and go, oh, that's spray paint. And then not realize the process that you go through it. You guys have seen it. Yeah, you did get it set up pretty quick, but you figured it out. I just, I, I cracked me up the other night when you're like, I have no idea how to stop the video. <laughs> I loved it, and I would love to have helped you because technical, from a technological standpoint, you know, I know words here. I actually, IT, uh, I actually, you know, could probably help you figure it out, but I had no idea what system you were using. I use a third party system called X splitter and that way I can do fun things on the thing like I can add in um, do that which is nothing this you know I can make it where I can here's my random YouTube comment picker whenever I do drawings so I make it where I can kinda like what um, Carrie and PJ do I'm able to use the software to put several cameras on if I had more than one or display a uh, website in the corner or something give me a thumbs up or thumbs down
Those who came in late, I'm doing a faux stained glass technique on cardstock with liquid leading, which is about three bucks at Hobby Lobby. The five dollar watercolors at Michael's, and then glossy accents. I think I actually picked that up uh, at Michael's with a forty or fifty percent off coupon, so that's even cheap. Then you end up with this cool effect here that. Like I said, if you see just right, it looks like it's has a has glass. Anyway, where was I? Orange. Okay. <laughs> so again, after this step, I'll let it dry. Probably use a heat gun, and then I'll show you putting the glossy accents on. You guys have all probably done glossy accents, so it's not like I'm teaching anything new. Now, Danina, you did a great job. You're, you're. Uh, I wish I would have. I wish I would have won something on the dice game because you had some awesome giveaways. I was, I was very impressed. Those things were awesome, and I needed everything you gave away. <laughs> Just sorry, I had to go to bed. You know, I'm a night owl, but I also have to get up for work, and I still didn't sleep well last night. What inks did you get? Yeah, let me go get my Michaels hole. I'm going to paint this last orange pa panel and then I'm going to, or not my Michaels hole, I'm going to get my Hobby Lobby hole and I'll show you, like I said, when I do my marbling video, I'm going to do some marbly painting papers because um, I need to do more painting papers for the swap. I'm going to do the one with the actual marbles that I bought at Dollar Tree in a box like, uh, Michelle, or like Melissa did. And then I'm going to do shaving cream style marbling with my um, tattered angels that I bought it Tuesday morning. And then let me go. Let me go get my. Let's sit there. And then. I robbed Peter to pay Paul, and I pre-dipped into my paycheck that's going in tomorrow because I didn't want to miss this Hobby Lobby haul or this Hobby Lobby sale. Now, um, they had a lot of the Tim Holtz stuff basically sold out, so nothing that they had left of his I really liked. Now, I didn't go to our other Hobby Lobby, but I got the Watercolor Ink by Bria Reese. And I got seven different colors, so that was seven dollars. And then I got six of the oh dollar and Romy, I think that's what they're called, artist inks. And I'm going to do these, those two things on um, shaving cream to do barbel papers. So I did get six bottles of this, so that was at a buck forty-nine. Um, these were these were on clearance. These are little. Uh, Flowers with a uh, black rhinestone in them with the uh, look like they're out of uh, books book pages That was a dollar and then Nope, that's all I got so I got six of the neat the the, the jet glass jar bit of those I got the water color in that one. I spent $18 which I was very happy with I haven't added up the total, but those those uh, inks are pretty expensive, so we got a good deal. Yeah, you got 30 of them. I mean, I would have if I had the money. Like I said, I get paid tomorrow, and so I pre-spent some of my paycheck just so I can get a little bit of the inks. <clears throat> um, I may go tomorrow to the other Hobby Lobby and see if they have anything left, but I'm not that concerned about it. I, I have so much stuff I still don't even touch. I really need to kind of not spend. <laughs> All right. Have I been out of frame painting this? I'm so sorry.
So I'm going to paint these corners and these corners the same color. I think that would be neat. Plus, I need to start saving up and buying more spray paint for the spring because I'm going to try to get out and see if I can get some businesses downtown to let me set up on weekends just outside their door. And just paint on the street. And hopefully I'll get a sale here or there every weekend. Hmm. Let's see, I've done purple, teal, pink, orange. Throw color theory out the window. I'm going to do this green here. Hmm. Why, thank you, little C. Yeah, um, Sharon, this is um, the pearlescent watercolors from Michael's from their everyday line. Uh, they're the $5 sets. And it's really, I mean, if you look at it, it's really shiny and then again like i said i put glossy accents on top of this to make it look like glass uh, i'm starting to go tuesday morning way too much that's where i've been spending most of my money anymore but you know i'm coming out of there with cool stuff i have that $20 embossing machine from Sizzix, or yeah, I bought it for $20. It's worth, what, $50? I've gotten several embossing folders that you get for like 2 bucks that are worth like 4 to 5 to 7 bucks. Let's see, what else have I gotten there? Um, some fun papers. Oh, and I got all those Tattered Angels, Tattered Angels Glimmer Mists. I got 15 of them. For fifteen dollars, no, thirty dollars, and only had three repeats. I mean, shit. So Kelly, did you guys have a lot of good stuff on your Hobby Lobby clearance then, because of it being an Oklahoma company, or were you able to at least hit a lot of them? Trying to remember where are you, Kelly, in in Oklahoma? Did you know I lived in Duncan for about two years, right out of college? I don't know if you were that far south. Uh, the black lines are the liquid simulated liquid letting so this is by the stained glass stuff it's 2.99 at hobby lobby it's two ounces of basically i mean i don't know if it's black glue paint or what it would be considered but it just simulates the letting see if i can tell you and people use this on glass and then paint the glass to make it look stained glass but i thought i'd do paper because i can use them for atcs and things like where's Where's that ATC? All right, what'd you do with it? It's so like this is going to be like a postcard size. Yeah, I had an ATC size one. Ah, so like this is an ATC. Hi, Sherry. Oh, you live in Eated. Okay, we used to have an office in Eated. I worked for Schlumberger, which is a oil uh, exploration uh, company, wire line and testing company. I'd come up there and do jobs when they needed my help. So I've been to Enid a few times. Enid, Woodward, up in that area. A lot of my work was in southern and eastern Oklahoma, but I did end up coming up to Enid once in a while. How much is tulip fabric paint? 
And but at the same time, it does when it dries. Is it? Um, well, I guess it would be water resistant, or at least water watercolor resistant. <laughs> Hello, Donna. Oh, that was the one thing I was reading a comment up there about stamping. Man, I cannot believe how many stamps were on sale. Wooden block stamps were on sale at Hobby Lobby. Problem is, I don't do, I mean, I do a lot of stamping, but I didn't really feel I needed to buy them, but man, they were on sale. Deep discounts. <laughs> so I can't believe, T, you're coming in my room and you're behaving. You haven't even been spanked yet. All right, so that's what it looks like so far. Um, the corners, the little squares are green. The long rectangles on the outside are orange. We have some teal, some purple, and then this is like a pink. Can't quite tell. My, I don't want my colors off. So let's do the middle, and then I'll do glossy act. I'll dry it, and then we'll do glossy accents, and you can kind of see a finished product that wasn't already done ahead of time. Um, blue. I don't know why I don't have blue on here yet. Blue or green? I can't teal. So besides clear, clear is my favorite color. I would say blue or teal are my favorite colors that are actually, you know, have like, what, opaque? Is that what they're called? Can you guys take a guess why clear is my favorite color? I think she was talking about a big bottle of um, tulip fabric paint instead of using maybe this liquid leading for the black lines. I'd say anything that has a little bit of raised, you know, puffy paint, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that has a little bit of a lip, because like I said, it really, it's really cool is it's like little pools in here like you can pull up the watercolor and not worry about it intruding on the other side so you don't have to be 100% neat on this process of course I think I am trying to be I don't know okay Dan, you know, Wanda, that was my first perfect stamp or my first, uh, uh, what's the name brand that's also out there for stamping. Stamp Perfect is the one I bought eventually from Michaels. But I used a CD case uh, and I would put my clear stamp on them and then stamp them down. I like my perfect stamper. I have it. Thought I had it right here by me. I do somewhere. Oh, I need to organize again. Oh, this is annoying when my craft area is messy. I'm off camera. Stop it, Sean. Now I see the struggles of YouTubers doing projects and then they end up off camera.
So if you guys don't mind, can we talk? If if you guys have seen my chainmail jewelry, I want some input. Um, of if you were to buy, if you were someone who would buy chainmail jewelry like that or bracelets that I'm making, I'm trying to get an idea from the the public what a good price point is for those. Um, I'm not a hundred. Yeah, the Misty tool. Thank you. I'm not a hundred percent. You know all concerned about oh you know how many hours did it take me to make for me it's what is the what is the market bear like if you were to buy a bracelet like that off of Etsy or off of an artist how much would you spend and again I'll show you an example of one so this is the one that's called sweet pea it has a lobster clasp And they're all about seven inches. I can make them whatever size. But if I were to start selling these on Etsy, what would someone pay? And on this one, like I said, I've made matching earrings that I got to get the hooks for. My thing about those stamping platforms is I have a lot of um, stamps that I've either been gifted or I've bought a Craigslist in bulk, like hauls, like um, clearance, that have the wood blocks. So anyone have any success taking them off the wood blocks then using stamp platforms with them? So you think start out at 25? That's cool. I didn't know if I had to go cheaper. I mean, I have my paparazzi jewelry that I rep, and it's five dollars. But it's also made in China at our factory, which is still well made. Yes, Danina, I'm making these by hand. This is chain mail. I'm doing different chainmail weaves. So I mean, my stuff is made by hand. Like I said, that's the difference between this and the five dollar stuff that I sell for paparazzi. This is going to be my own personal stuff that I make and sell. Paparazzi. I mean, the five dollar jewelry is awesome, and I make a little bit of profit off of it because I can sell several pieces. But I want to try to sell my own jewelry too. Oh, if it, if it turns your arm green, that's just a that's just an artist effect. It's called the color changing jewelry. You ever heard of color changing stuff? You know the heat stuff. You, know, you put your hand on it, it changes colors. It's just the same thing. Oh, Sherry, you want one for your birthday? <laughs> I wish I could make these and give them away. I mean. Which I probably will. I'll probably give some of these away as Happy Mail once in a while. I'm just, you know, luckily the class I took, I ended up with these rings to bring home to play with. But I, uh, I need to buy more whenever I get money. And I want to buy colored ones because I want to do colored rings. Okay, so here's the finished product. Close your ears, block your ears. I'm going to turn the heat gun on just to make sure these are... Make sure the watercolor's dry. I don't know that I would get too close to the leading with the heat for very long because it might remelt it. But... All right, so there's the there's the product all painted in. So Wanda, even an aluminum or something like that, a polished silver or aluminum, or an anodized uh, aluminum where it's the red or black uh, where it's been baked on. Hmm. 
I mean, because all the rings that we have are definitely lead and nickel free that we, we get these days for the supplies. Okay, so now, you, I mean, most of you probably use glossy accents. Again, this is where I kind of like that the fact that the black is like a, a wall. So these are all like little pans for medium. So just pour your glossy accents in and spread it out. Filling up each of the window panes. Sorry, I'm kind of focusing. It's like therapeutic. <laughs> fill in, fill it in. Now, one thing, T, is I haven't had any problem. This was my first project, and it's been running around here in my craft room, just freely roaming around the desk. And it's all stuck, but I think it's because I'm not on glass. I'm straight on to cardstock, so I think it's grabbed onto the fibers of the cardstock. So, so far, I haven't had any problems with it flaking. And again, I'm using so little that this two-ounce bottle is going to go forever for me. But again, use what you all like. I'm just kind of showing you a technique that I like. Um, maybe you can take some parts of it, tweak it. You guys can use the same parts I use. I am in no way an expert. This is just something I've done and had fun with and wanted to share. Little Crafts Creations is Michelle. Can you use the Mod Podge 3D instead of Glossy Accents? I don't see why not. Um, the big thing about it is what I'm using it for is to give it that shine, that clear shine to make it look like it's a pane of glass. So again, when you catch this just right, you see it's uh, it looks like it's glass. I mean, I have Mod Podge, uh, just regular Mod Podge clear when it dries. That may work too, gloss. But again, I had, I think, a 50 or so percent off coupon at Michael's. Didn't have any glossy accents, and I'm sure I'll use it for many other projects. Yeah, I think, T, that on... Um, Clear vinyl, it might have troubles because it's flexible. This cardstock pretty stiff, so it's not gonna do a lot of bending. And I think it's like I said, I also think it's grabbed onto the paper fibers. 
Um, but I could see it being on clear vinyl if it bends and stuff like that. It would tend to break apart away from the plastic. I think on glass it might work just fine because glass is rigid. It's hard and stiff. <laughs> on top of a box that would be cool like those wooden boxes you can buy at michael's or hobby lobby and finish the unpainted boxes and stuff the paper ones and the wooden ones i mean i want this to have like a definite popping glass effect so i'm filling these pools up pretty good I think I was a little conservative when I did the glossy accents on this one. Matter of fact, there's a chance I only did the diamond on this one. I think it is. I never did expand past the diamond on this one. I think it was just my experimental piece. So you can actually see the difference. One looks matte and one looks like it's glossy. There you go. Oh, right there. Oh, right there. <laughs> if you do it on fabric I think that's where the tulip fabric paint is the best probably because that's what it's designed for is to be on fabric and not wash out or fall off because of the fabric bending All right, so I'm going to stop there also on the inside. Just kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. So I did the whole inside square. You can see it while well, it's wet right now. It's really shiny. And it'll dry, make a nice coat. <gasps> okay. So you might not be, you know, you might be surprised a little bit. I may end up sending stuff like this out one day. You'll see it in your thing. So I have a list of videos I want to do. And I kind of want to take this moment, if you guys will help me, and I want to come up with some more video ideas of what I can do for you guys, whether it be lives or just pre-recorded tutorials or videos. So I want to do a demo on the die cut poop, which is what um, Sharon Geither Cordis taught me. So um, I'm going to do some more die cuts, get some more poop, and do a video on this. A lot of other people have done this method. They've uh, come out and posted pictures, and uh, so I'm not the only, not the first one to do this. But I want to show you guys on a video how to do it. Um, I'm going to do the marbling, which I'm probably going to do that in the next couple days. But I'm going to do the three marbling techniques. I have a bag of marbles from Dollar Tree. I'm going to do the marbling kits from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to do the shaving cream method with my inks and my glimmer mists. I'm going to do embossing folders with paper and aluminum or aluminum foil and then show different methods of coloring and highlighting those with inks and gelatos and different things. Uh, I'm going to do the stained glass faux. Done. Check mark. Uh, people have been asking me to do Zen Tangles. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it. I've been wanting to get in and make uh, adult coloring pages to sell on Etsy. So one night I sat down, or not one night, several. Yeah, these are recorded, so these will be up on my thing. So I've been doing Zentangling, and I'm going to start making adult coloring pages. I see that T. It's on my list. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, so this is my first one. It's called Love. And so I'm trying to make it for digital download, for you to print, download and print. 
So if you see it, I have a couple of hearts built into it here and here. Hi, Christine. And so I want to um, maybe do some videos on different Zentangle patterns. So people have requested I do that. This is my first coloring page I've made. Um, let's see. Um, Chainmail jewelry. People asked actually to show how I do the chain, some of the chainmail jewelry. So one night when I'm in the mood to just do chainmail, I'll get on live and just do chainmail. Um, this one's a weird one. 25 layers on an ATC. I don't know who gave me that idea, but it's, I don't know. We'll see. Um, oh, and someone said last night, Galaxy ATCs. So I've used watercolors. Um, and such to make galaxy backgrounds and so I may try to repeat what I did there yeah I don't know how to do the 25 layered I mean I assume just put papers and paints and different things down and do 25 layers by the time it's all said and done what's gonna be like this thick <laughs> alright so those are my ideas so far between myself and other people's input what else what other uh, videos would you like me to try? I mean, I, even if I don't know how to do it, I'll figure out how to do it, or we can all just sit here and watch me uh, play and, 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 and fail. <laughs> I got to get my Valen Poodles out. These are how my Valen Poodles ended up. It says, great friends, good times, warm hearts. And the paper is uh, jelly plate paper that I did. And this is Happy Boo Up Valen Poodles Day. Oh. Start with ink. 24 layers and a focal picture. You guys that uh, ever go to victoriantrading.com or Victoria Trading Company and order their catalog? If you're wanting some great stuff to cut out for collaging, they have some great pictures in there. A lot of Victorian stuff. Definitely, definitely cool stuff. Now, I wouldn't buy anything in here because, to me, everything's expensive as can be. But, like, look at that typewriter pen holder. You can cut that out. Who are all the lucky poodles that are getting my cards? I don't know. I haven't gone through the list to figure out who I'm going to send them to yet. This was my first uh, hard copy in probably a, a year. I was signed up, but they stopped sending me hard copies, so I went back on. I don't know if they take you off their list every once in a while if you don't order. But it's pretty stuff. <laughs> My mixed media mashup from last week. Hi, Crafty. What's going on, KK? So, Crafty, I just did a demo on how to do the faux stained glass. So I use the watercolors. These are the pearlescent ones from Michaels. So they're $5 ones. Use liquid letting 
to make the lines and I top it off with some glossy accents to make it look like glass. Trying to find your mojo. Well, if you want your mojo, just screw it and do it. Get out some paper right now and let's get some, uh, get your watercolors and let's do it. Oh, what was the name of that uh, company? It's called the Victorian Trading Company. And you can search for them and then they have a place on there where you can sign up for their mailing list for their catalog. Jen, every right now it's Wednesday night now. If you go to Stacy's Mix Media Mashup, sit down while she's doing it. She draws cards that are prompts, and then we just plop stuff on paper. And it, it kind of got me remotivated to uh, uh, keep myself out of bed at night and not just mope around with my bad back. It's going to hurt bad. It's going to hurt at my kitchen table. Watercolor markers are cool. I actually almost didn't find my um, I almost didn't find my uh, watercolor set before I started this video, and I'm freaking out. And then I remembered I have those watercolor markers from Michaels, and I thought, well, if anything, I'll just put them down here, and I'll just paint with them. But these, these pearlescent colors are awesome. Where's my paper cutter? Art bitch, where's my paper cutter? I don't have an art bitch. Shit. <laughs> I need an art bitch. Spanky, where are you? I haven't seen Spanky in a couple of nights. Anyone seen Spanky around? Can't even keep track of my own girlfriend. Let me get these watercolors back out. These actually have some awesome color to them. Um, let me go to the website and see. Uh, no, it can't go there. I hope I can pull it up on here, but I don't have that programmed right now. Okay, if you go to the victoriantradingco.com, down on the main page, down below all those graphics where it says bestsellers, curiosities, home decor, there is a catalog request. Join our mailing list, mailing list and receive a free request. So I'm going to see if I can post this. See if that works there. Yeah, that didn't work. Darn it. But it's there. If you go to the main page, down about three quarters of the way down, there's a link that says request, catalog request, or something like that. Um, let's see, where are we at? What did I miss? Rita, what do I use to collage with? Um, I'll use... Um, 
Mod Podge. I don't make my own homemade Mod Podge yet because um, I bought several little bottles of Mod Podge. But um, Stacy does a formula. It's like I want to say three parts glue, one part water to make her own Mod Podge. <laughs> T, she's driven to drink, yeah. Uh, the other night she posted that she grounded her mom. All right, back to what I was doing. So I wanted to play with these. Red and purple. Yeah, I mean, I think you can get, you know, the day with all the internet and Google and Google images and stuff. You can get so many images if you have the, a printer and stuff like that. Now, I have access to a printer at work, but not at home. My big thing is um, as long as you're not... I, I, I do kind of run the whole royalty free image seriously. So I try not to use images if stuff I'm going to sell that aren't royalty free. So it gets harder. Yeah, what's funny is I used to, uh, when I collaged at first, I used to use, um, when I first started, I used to use uh, glue sticks. <laughs> I didn't use Mod Podge until later when I became a real crafter. Because I'm a real boy. Yay, Rita! Now Rita's going to be dangerous. She has the catalog coming. We're going to get some really cool Victorian collages from her. One thing I have to say is the brush that comes with this set of watercolors is crappy. It is shedding like my cat. I do not follow a schedule. Unfortunately, my life is so random right now between hurting and and just things popping up, whether I work late for uh, at work. And, you know, there's so many live crafters that I try to respect them. And I actually go up to a lot of theirs, so I kind of try not to broadcast at the same time as a lot of the folks that I go see. Um, but mine will generally probably be later in the evening, like um, 8 or 9 o'clock central or later. Only because by the time I get off work, eat dinner, take care of things, then I might be motivated to kick on the camera and um, show you guys and talk to you guys. Um, in the spring, again, be on the watch out. Weekends, for sure, will probably be my spray paint art uh, lives. Um, which is going to be awesome. I cannot wait. I'm actually getting pumped up this year to do more. Also, 
the um, I do metal detecting so just to bore you guys enough I'll probably be posting videos of me going out metal detecting now those probably won't be live of course because I'll be out somewhere at an old house digging and stuff so I can't live freely but there'll be a few metal detecting videos especially if I find some really cool relics or silver coins so be prepared to be bored on those if you'll just come in maybe thumbs up and watch them so I can get my minutes <laughs> I don't know how this is turning out. Tammy! Watch your ears. What about copyright protection you're talking about? Mm, man, I made this wet. I don't want to hear anything from peanut gallery. Ooh, definitely wet. <laughs> Yeah, the paint's not very bright. I mean, it's a $5 set of paints. Uh, the pans aren't very deep, so you'll go through the colors pretty quick if you use one certain color a lot. Um, but what I like about it is it has a very good shine to it, like very good glimmer to it. Very pearly. Haha, ha, T. I knew that would come. Shoot, bad choice of words there, too. Anyway. Alright, well, there's some muddy watercolor painting. There's the results. Gosh, this thing doesn't focus. I don't like autofocus. There we go. So there it is. It's just a playing around with putting water and watercolors on there. You can see, look at how it catches. Very shimmery. Am I in my underwear, Danina? I'm in my berry bag. But yes, I'm in my underwear. You just can't see me. <laughs> yeah, this is just plain cardstock. I think this was the 110 pound um, reflections from Michaels. Now, one thing is. Um, I don't have any watercolor paper that I have found. I have to buy a pack. So if I play with my watercolors, I'd probably do those instead. So that turned out cute, but if you guys have ever played with these Tattered Angels Glimmers Mist, oh, you want to talk about glimmery? I don't like glitter, but I love the fact that this thing shines. So there, I just added some purple, purple glimmer mist to that. 
<laughs> that glimmer mist is really cool. Uh oh. I don't like them because I don't have them. Get your dollar, get your Tuesday morning. They might still have some left. Yeah, I know. I should just buy a pack or a, a pad of it. Just have them broken down. Keep them on their sides. Okay, why, Danina? Does that keep the shimmer stuff from not collecting? Lori, we were talking about getting the Tattered Angels uh, Glimmer Mist. They had them in packs of five for $10. And I bought three packs of them because it had every, almost every color they had out there. I ended up with three repeats. So. so on the side, not the bottom. Okay. Well, if I ever organize this place, I'll lay them on their side somewhere. Okay, so last thing before I go to bed because, you know, I only have to get up for work in six-ish hours, so that's not too bad. Um, I'm going to try to figure out how I can use this, but I went to a flea market. I think it was an antique store, and I found these old record books. So these are like the record books where like storekeepers would enter in their journal pages of, of their costs and their expenditures for the day and such. So this came from a service station in a town just west of me. Again, these were in a flea market. So this is all his daily journal, and here's September 1st, 1960. And it looks like here's his gas readings when he started the day and when he ended the day. And he sold, uh, looks like, 46 cents in cigarettes and 41 cents in pop. So he sold 87 cents in products. On September 2nd, he did $2.05. He kept record every day. And he actually, what's amazing, is he actually had several of these books that they got in this um, flea market. I only picked up two. I only picked up two, but what's cool about it is this one's the ledger, so I can use these in a lot of mixed media. This is his own personal record. He was a musician. He played um, around the area at a bunch of different gigs. And he kept record. It's his personal appearance record. He kept record of all of his performances he went and did. This is his very first one. I only picked up volume one. And I think if I go back, they're all still there. Especially because I reburied them underneath piles of stuff. But on July 20th, 1955, it was a Wednesday. He played at the Free Will Baptist Church at 18th and Virginia. He played the songs Judy, Noreen, or, or these might be people that were there. He played Precious Memories, 
and mansion over the hilltop. I think that's what he did. Oh, participants and songs. So Judy, Noreen, Fern, Dixie, and Carol were there. And then over here, it shows, I think this is what instrument he played, and this is what he got paid. Now, he doesn't have anything in payment until later back here, but this is so awesome. Yeah, I know, I would be hard to pull stuff out of here, but I figured maybe one page out of here somewhere to use as a, uh, and maybe not out of his singing ledger, but maybe out of his, you know, just his personal gas station records. You know, this would be cool on a mixed media piece. You know, and I wouldn't miss that one page. But yeah, so here's all his performances. Here's his second. Here's his, and he did Siete. He did it in Spanish, Ocho. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Siete, Ocho, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And again, there are several books of this, and I only bought one because I was short on money when I was there. So this goes all the way back from his first performance, July 20th, 55, to his 179th performance, which was February 11th, 1962. He sang, How Great Thou Art. They furnished the organ. And he did it as a solo. Sang, sang lots of gospel music. But there's also this other thing in here. Here's a list of his songs. Songs and instrumental numbers in 4-4 time, slow to medium tempo. Yellow Rosa, Texas, Standing at the End of the World, Footprints in Snow. So this was, I think, his song set that he had. Wreck of Old 97, Buffalo Gals. These are, oh, we played mandolin. So this was, he played mandolin here. And guitar. And I wonder if H is harmonica. Let's see. Mandolin. Yeah, he didn't say in here. Anyway, I'm missing the chat. I'm sorry. Scan them. That's a good idea. And the color and the smell. You want to talk about it smells old. You know how you have that smell when you go into flea markets or, or antique stores? And again, this is just his first book. Here's an attendance record. His mom, I think it's his mom. This was his old, he went to Dunwig High School, and this was his class sophomore year. This was his attendance record for 1945 to 46, and his grade card, World History. He made an M+, plus, which was average, and then he bumped it up to an S+, plus, which was above average, and his mom and dad signed it. Oh my gosh, I didn't know these were in here. This was his freshman year of high school. Ah. Wow. This was uh, an event. So this was a letter from the Biltmore Hotel in Granby, or Oklahoma Biltmore Hotel. Oklahoma City, the Biltmore. Okay, you seeing this? So this is an envelope addressed to Mr. Charles Strayer on Range Line in Joplin, Missouri. It's postmarked, oh, it doesn't say. It looks like 30, I don't think 37. But there's a letter. This is from the Lux Theater by Art Perry in Granby, Missouri, March 10th, 1957. Oh, how much did I pay for it? Oh, um, you know, I want to say it was maybe about three or four bucks per book. This says, Dear Charlie, here is Jack Feidler's phone number, Web City, Missouri, 1522J. So you can tell, I didn't even, you know, I'm, I was born in 71. I, I, you know, I'll age myself. I'm 46. And his phone number is 1522J. I saw him last night, and he's going to Anderson Wednesday night, the 13th. So if you are in need of a way down, you might have him, you might buy him some gas and come with him. Hope to see you Wednesday night in Anderson. You and your boys are to receive $6. So if he plays, 
he would uh, make $6. If you know of any amateurs, bring them along. This was at the Lux Theater in Granby, Missouri. And so let's see if he actually played there. Let's see, that was 1957. And that was going to be March 13th. March 13th, 57. It says here, Anderson, Missouri, Lyric Theater, but it does not appear that he may be played because he didn't list any songs. You'll send me money to buy more? All right, just Facebook money, Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, me some money. Oh, Kelly, you think that Biltmore is still in Oklahoma City? It may be. It looked like a neat old hotel. But what's weird is why a guy in Granby, Missouri was using an envelope from the... Biltmore Hotel is weird. I don't know if he just had a stash of them or what. Tell you what I'll do is I will try to take these to work and scan them. And I'll post some of the pictures in our groups. Um, I'll make an album in like Pink Poodle Crafts. Is that where everyone mostly is? Is Pink Poodle Crafts? <laughs> but yeah, this is a uh, this is kind of cool. I didn't know his grade cards were in here. That is awesome. Those are those are definitely cool to scan. All right, so I'll take these to work and try to scan some stuff out of here in this other record book. And again, I I, I don't have the pricing because they took they took the uh, little tags. But I want to say I and again at the time I was short on money. I want to say they were like four bucks each or so. Yeah, I'll post them in like maybe 70 acres, maybe in pink poodles. But I went to the the restore. You guys know what the restore is called. Um, it's the Habitat for Humanity restore. And they had books on sale for like, I think you can buy 10 books for a dollar. And so I went through all the books and I was trying to find good ones to use for mixed media. And one of the books, which is way worth the 10 cents, is this old Webster's New World Dictionary. And what's neat about this is I can antique these pages, but they come with all these different diagrams so I have plenty of pages to work with here as far as that that's just one of the books but the other book I got was this old trivia book from what year was this okay Danina 1966 trivia book So, here's a question about Hellman's mayonnaise. The Restore, Linda, uh, this one had tons of books, and the one my local one does have books. So, uh, Hellman's mayonnaise. What went into Hellman's real mayonnaise? What went into Hellman's Real Mayonnaise? The whole egg. So did they put a whole egg in there? I don't get it. Who was Clarabelle Hornblower?
I would think to make mayonnaise, you'd need oil, too. Clarabelle horn blower is the only woman who knew the identity of the Lone Ranger. Huh. I don't remember that. I used to watch mm -hmm. that show when I was a kid on reruns. Who played Lois Lane on television? The funny thing is, I think I watched the reruns of that one, too. It was the old black and white. I think, in my opinion, he was one of the best uh, Supermans. But the reason why I got this was I thought it was kind of cool. It's all trivia, but the papers are all antiqued. I mean, they're yellowed. Awesome. What was the name of the spring that would walk up and down stairs? <laughs> All right, you guys want me to do a giveaway? So I'm going to pick a question out of this trivia book. And the first person to give it get it right, yes, Tia Slinky. So the first person to get it right will get an 11 by 14 space painting out of my, my spray paint art. So I already have some painted up, and I'll pick one or let you pick one out of what I have already painted, and I'll mail it to you. All right? So after I get input, let me know if you guys are up for that, and I'll do a giveaway. All right, let me find a tough question. Now here's one that dates back, but it's also current, too. Well, that might be too easy for everyone. Let me move on. Okay. I'm having fun just reading through here. Here's one. All right. So I hope it's not excluding people because they don't know it. So the the the, the theme is Rin Ten Ten. So you guys remember the old show called Rin Ten Ten? So the first person to answer this right will win a space painting from me out of my out of my portfolio. Who was the boy? on the Ren Tin Tin television series. So what was the name of the boy on the Ren Tin Tin show?
Oh, Wanda. <laughs> yes, it was rusty. Yeah, these are old. You got to remember this was made in 1966. So we're talking trivia from 66 on back. So Wanda got it right. The answer is rusty. There is definitely some old stuff in here. What's funny is a lot of this stuff that I'm reading, I watched in reruns. So Wanda got it. Little C was close behind. Jimmy, I think, was in um, Lassie. Long Duck Dong. I think that's T's canned answer. Pete was the Magic Dragon. Who was the teacher on Ding Dong School? Now, I've never heard of Ding Dong School. <laughs> Speaking of Long Duck Dong. Oh, Timmy was on Lassie, yeah. You're right, it wasn't Jimmy. It was Timmy. Even I don't know the answers to some of these things. So who was the teacher on Ding Dong School? <laughs> oh, is it lagging that bad? Anyway, the answer to that one on the Ding Dong School is Miss Francis. Have you ever heard of that? So, all right. I need to think about signing off here and getting a couple hours sleep before work tomorrow. Halfway through the week. So I have three more days of work. I would sure wish I could do something like maybe craft all day instead of work. But I have to work. There's that spray. So, ladies, I appreciate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, however you want. Appreciate you joining me and learning and sharing and chatting. And I love you very, very much. And you can go Google Ding Dong School and see what it was. So, good night. And keep crafting. <laughs>